Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, fresh off a of victory against the Denver Broncos, is a five-time, 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 five-time pro bowler, five-time all-pro safety. Played for the Chargers, now he's with the Ravens. He has the greatest facial hair in all of professional sports. You can follow it at Weddle's Beard. Ladies and gentlemen, elite human being, Eric Weddle. That was a great intro. Wow. I think Greatest you, ever. I think you deserve it, brother. I appreciate that. How the hell did you guys win against the Broncos? Two block kicks and you still win the goddamn game. That's got to feel good. Shoot. It, you know, we needed it after the debacle on uh, Thursday night against the Bengals, so... You know, we were coming in and uh, didn't start off very well, but we're a resilient group and uh, get to play 60 minutes and definitely gets us at our place. We're going to fight the whole way, and uh, we got a clutch win for sure. Well, and Ray Lewis was there. He did the whole goddamn entrance and all that stuff. <laughs> he did. He did. That never gets old, right? <laughs> Uh, you've been there for a while now. Whenever you left the Chargers, nobody really expected because you were like a mainstay over there. Uh, Eric Weddle, the gloveless wearing, beard having safety, he was like, okay, you're going to be home forever. Then you go to the Ravens. You've been there for a while now. You're a big time veteran on that team. That team looks a lot better this year than uh, maybe in years past. Is uh, Joe Flacco's change of uh, mindset helping with that? Or what is it about the Ravens right now? Well, I think uh, there are a number of factors that go into his play and, you know, the new weapons we have on offense, being the same coordinator for almost three seasons now, and he's healthy for the first time in three seasons, had a full off season, full training camp, and uh, it shows he's, he's confident, he, he likes what we're doing, and, you know, when we protect him, uh, for any quarterback, let alone Joe, you could be successful in this league, so... Uh, we go as Joe goes. Obviously, we defensively, we can help out by playing great ball. But he plays well on Sundays. We have a great shot of winning, and it, and it shows over over the season so far. You're a five-time All-Pro, five-time Pro Bowler, mainstay in the NFL conversation for great defensive players. The rules, especially the Clay Matthews hits. I don't know if you've got a chance to see this. The Clay oh Matthews. My, oh, my goodness gracious. Weddle, as a defensive player, what Continue. are you? What is the? What is defensive player? What are defensive players going to do in the NFL? How are you guys going to get around these rules that are fantasy football rules that are basically trying to diminish everything you guys do? Yeah, it's uh, it's putting us in a tough position, and uh, it's just it's crazy that they're they're trying to change everything that this game has has been built on over one position in in that player where. Defensive players can get cut, blown, blown legs out, knees out by linemen. But who are we really trying to protect? It's all about the QBs, and it's it's frustrating for us. These game-defining plays. I mean, the one on Clay Matthews, that that tilts the play, oh. the game. I mean, these you're talking about one, three to four plays that decide these games in the NFL. And now you're literally changing games, changing wins and losses by – Kicky tack quarterback roughing the passers. I mean, it's it's frustrating to say the least. And you just hope that they can come to the senses because people are going to just stop watching the game when they see this week in and week out games deciding on terrible calls that have nothing to do with the game. I think a lot of the NFL's core fans are calling the game soft. A lot of players are coming out and saying that the game is getting soft. You see a lot of retired players who I think possibly could be the reason for all of this, by the way, due to the not all retired players, but the select few who uh, have had terrible issues with CT, the lawsuit, everything like that, made the NFL kind of tuck their tail between their legs and change the game. But you're hearing a lot of people talk about how the game is getting soft. As somebody who has been here since the game was back hard-nosed before CTE was even a thing on the defensive side, and now you're watching the game change, do you think the game is getting soft or do you think they're just trying to adjust to bad situations? Well, I mean – playing in it i'm still sore <laughs> and i'm still i'm still throwing it in there like i'm 21 years old as a rookie trying to prove myself so i don't necessarily think it's soft i think the game is changing towards 
offensive philosophy, offensive game, offensive minded. They want scores. They want points. They want action. They don't want to see defense. They don't want to see hard hits. They don't. They don't want to see that. So, I think the game has changed over my career, where it was. It was physical, tough, hard nose, run the ball, uh, play actions, and now it's spread them out, get the ball in the, the perimeter, make guys miss, get out of bounds, that stuff. So I don't think the game's getting soft. I just think officiating the rules they change year in and year out is, you know, the perception is the game is going that way. But physically, I mean, I, I give it my all and then throw it in there to these guys. So. I still feel the same. <laughs> what do you, uh, are you an acupuncture guy, massage therapy, hot tub, cold tub? What do you do? What do you do to get the, the, oh uh, man, I just work out. The hardest workout of the week is the day after a game and hot tub and cold tub and sauna. I don't get massages, acupuncture, all that other stuff. I think it's a waste of money <laughs> and time. And when you, when you have four kids and you, you're gone as much as I am to tell them, Hey, I'm going to be gone for another two, three hours getting a massage. My wife will look at me like, yeah, right, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're going to be home taking care of these kids. So, yeah, I've never never really gotten them. And I know what works for me. And I spend enough time away. So if I do have some time, i got to spend it with my wife and kids. You said your hardest workout of your day is the ga- day after a game. What was uh, – this will be airing tomorrow. What was yesterday's workout for Eric Weddle? Uh, shoot, it's a full body. Uh, I'll, I'll start out with a run and a good stretch and get the heart rate up, get the blood flowing throughout my body, and then get in for a full body. So it'll consist of some some uh, some type of legs, whether it's squats, lunges, step-ups, whatever we got. It's every four weeks we, we switch up our workout, and then we'll go into shoulders and, and chest and back and – basically hit everything uh, that uh, a full body workout would consist of. And anything that's nagging or sore, we hit those areas so we could tighten up the joints and get blood into those areas to make the recovery process quicker. You know, different strokes for different blokes. I used to nap the day after games. That was my big go-to. <laughs> <laughs> Rightfully so, right? <laughs> hey, I checked your Wikipedia. It said you joined the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Are you a Mormon? Yes. Did you yes. go on a mission trip? I didn't. I got baptized when I was 20. So uh, I got baptized a year later. I got married. And a year and a half after that, I had our first kid. So I got right into it. Oh, God. I, Austin Colley was a teammate of mine for years. And his. He, oh, geez. He took, a, <laughs> hey, he took a mission trip in Venezuela or something like that. And he learns, he knows perfect Spanish. He knows the whole thing. I was excited yeah. to hear if you went on one. Yeah. I mean, if I grew up in the church, I most likely would have. But. Since I got baptized so late, uh, later in my in life, it was, and I was already two years into my college career, so it was, it was on the back burner after that. But you know, when the kids are out of the house, I'm sure my my wife and I will do a couple's mission when when we're old and retired. Have you seen the Book of Mormon? Have I seen the Book of Mormon? Yeah, the play by the South Park guys. No, no. I heard it's pretty entertaining, though. <laughs> <laughs> I always, because Austin had left the Colts by then, and I just used Austin as my Mormon shoulder to lean on, basically. Whenever Mitt Romney was running yeah, for yeah. president, I was like, Austin, I want to hear everything. <laughs> I want to learn about it. He was very nice, very gracious. And then the Book of Mormon, the Broadway show, came out after he left, so I never got a chance to really ask. So that's why I, yeah. I, I figured I'd throw it in there. All right. No, it's all good. I, I can take the jokes and stuff, but... Uh... You know, we have good conversations with teammates and let them know that I don't have six wives and and I don't believe in certain things. I believe in that the Son of God is Jesus Christ. And once once people understand that, then they go, oh, then then they look at me a little bit differently. So it's uh, it's always good to have conversations. Austin Colley and I had a 35 minute, basically speed through of the entire Mormon religion. And I hammered him with <laughs> every go. single question. And it was at the end of it, I was like, oh, this is a much more relatable religion than most of the other religions out there, Austin. <laughs> and uh, it, was, yeah. it was very interesting. Yeah, it's, it's good. Now, he hammers Diet Coke, though, and I, I think that is kind of something that you guys <laughs> frown upon, but that's neither here, here, here nor there. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, well, what, what he may not have told you now is at, at, on the BYU campus, they actually 
have vending machines with Coke there now. So <sighs> they've kind of lightened up on the whole Coke, Diet Coke thing. Wow. That's <laughs> insane. What are the, yeah, what, that's, that's light years, right? How many years are you going to play football for? Forever? No, no, definitely not. I don't, you know, I'm just taking it this year by year. I mean, it's, uh, who would ever thought 12 years is, is amazing, amazing feat. And as I've told people, as long as I can run and, and do what I do defensively, I'll keep playing. Uh, as soon as that, I think it's dropping off or my wife is going to, uh, leave me, then I'm going <laughs> to step away and, and, and right off into the sunset. But I still love the game. I love the grind. I love competing. I love being around the young guys and, and trying to find ways to lead and to uh, relate to them and, and get the most out of them and to help them have better careers. So, uh, But I can't play forever. I know that. So whether it's one more year, I have one more year after this on my deal, and if they want me back over this season, I'm going to give it all I got. If not, then I'm definitely not going to play for another team. So I know that. Eric, speaking of your contract, and you mentioned you have one more year on the deal, uh, I have a question, and this is looking back in the rear view a little bit now. I'm always interested to ask this of guys who've experienced free agency. What was that like for you? Because I, myself, as a Steeler fan, I looked at you as a guy when you hit free agency who could potentially anchor this Pittsburgh defense for the next decade, and then you go and sign with like a bitter Never. rival. Now you give me nightmares every <laughs> other week. Uh, what, what was that process like for you? Was it easy? Was it stressful? Did a lot of teams reach out, or did you know where you wanted to go right away? Well, yeah, it was. Uh, I was, I was like the second tier of free agency. We knew that going in. I'm an older guy. Uh, I wasn't going to be the first wave of free agents that that can get reached out to. So, it was a more of a patient process. I didn't get a really a phone call till you know that first opening window was Monday. I didn't get my first phone call till Friday, and oh. and uh, you know from the teams that reached out initially. Uh, there were teams that just wasn't a good fit for me and and where they were as a team. I wanted to go somewhere, you know, great organization in, in a Super Super Bowl contending teams or won the Super Bowl in the past. So my, my teams were, you know, Baltimore, Pittsburgh. Uh, I knew the coaching staff in Dallas, so they're obviously one of them. Uh, New England, so, so, so the teams like that, Green Bay. And, you know, I thought I was a perfect fit for Pittsburgh. They just – they just were hanging around and not not wanting to pull the trigger. <laughs> they, they had some other they had some other options and and guys that they needed to get done before me and and they just never wanted to come 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 get it and and I'm really good friends with Ben so obviously that was a a destination that I wanted to make happen but it just never happened and in Baltimore and Dallas were were neck and neck and I was I was torn because I had the coaching staff uh, from Dallas, Rich Versace, I'm really close with, who was the best teams coach there. And uh, Baltimore, I just, at the in, in my gut, I just felt Baltimore was was the best spot for me. So I love, I've loved every second I was here. I, I always tell people that I, I felt, I feel being here for my third year is, I was meant to be a Raven and, and it feels like I've always uh, played my whole career here. You just heard the soul of two Pittsburgh Steelers fans just get sucked out of them right there whenever he said that. I wish you could have seen this, Eric Weddle. It was hysterical watching the size, and you heard the profanity uh, just because of the way that's, that is operating. Who's, who's Yeah, the- it's, it's, funny, it's funny to hear Pittsburgh fans. They always get on me like, you should have came here. You, you picked wrong. It's like, look, man, like I didn't have a choice. They didn't really want me. So oh. you, you, you guys forget, like, you can't just – I can say I want to go to a certain team, but if they don't want you or they don't offer you a contract, it doesn't happen, and you can't just wait around. So oh, yeah, might as well just pay just, Mike Mitchell It's funny, instead, to, funny to hear that side. Uh, who's the guy in the locker room, the Baltimore Ravens locker room, that keeps it light? Or is that you? Oh, my gosh. I mean, I always keep it light, especially around coaches and anyone else. Mm-hmm. It's, it's – uh, if, if coaches are acting pretty crazy, I, I – I step up and say, "Hey, we need to we need to relax a little bit." I heard Harb. <laughs> hey, I heard Harbaugh has had a couple of those situations in the past. Just for future reference, I won't. Uh, Har- Harb's the man. Like, l- listen, there's no one that wants to win more than Harbs. And when you have a coach that's honest and and uh, genuine at heart, you can always live with those those outbursts uh, when you have them because it's, it's coming from a good place. But 
It, who keeps it light in the locker room? I would say like Sizz is always on one. He's always <laughs> he's always funny. He's always cracking on someone. He's always in a good mood. Brandon Williams, Tony Jefferson. I mean, we got we got some characters. Or you better not have thin skin because it's one way or another you're gonna get cracked on, and you better not get all sensitive about it because then then your life will be over. Do you guys feel really good about the Ravens team? Do you guys feel good in that locker room? The locker room. You guys have had been in training camp for seven months before everybody else. Uh, oh my gosh, the longest training camp in the history <laughs> of the world. <laughs> July fifteenth, Pat. July fifteenth. I was here in Baltimore. Like <sighs> that's absurd. Why that should never happen ever. I mean, the Hall of Fame is is the worst. Whoever <laughs> thought of of making guys come in twenty seven days before their first game is. <laughs> is the asinine thing I've ever been a part of in my life. So, you know, it's Ray Lewis's fault yes, it was, that you were there. I know. Gosh dang you, Ray Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so good, didn't you? That'd be so good. <laughs> but you guys feel good as a team. I assume that 27-day training camp, Lamar Jackson, they were trying to split up the, the Ravens locker room. Everybody was trying to split that thing apart with Lamar Jackson and Joe Flacco. And it seems as if you guys are a team that just can't be budged. Yeah, I mean we got a we got a close group and a lot of personalities, but no egos, man. It's crazy to be a part of a team that's that's just about ball, just about the team. And and I've said this before that this is one of the closest teams, if not the closest, of just coming to work, competing, and no one really cares about the the notoriety. We just you know we haven't made the playoffs three years on a championship organization. And, you know, things things get uh, changed and things get serious real quick. So uh, this is a close group, and and we know uh, with Lamar coming that the distraction could be there. But when Joe plays like he's played all off season and really put that to rest, it's uh, it's really never been a uh, an actual conversation between the two. All right. Well, I appreciate the hell out of you, Mr. Weddle. Follow him along at Weddle's Beard. <laughs> How good is Tucker, by the way? Man, that guy's a ball. He's a beast. If he just wasn't such an egomaniac, I'd be like, I'd be like, I'd be more. <laughs> you just said no <laughs> egos in the that, locker room. <laughs> I guess that comes with being a kicker, but dude, I respect the heck out of them of those three: him, Sam, and Morgan. They work hard every day, and there's a reason why they're you know, one of the best groups in the league. So, well, we're happy to have them. Sometimes I gotta put him in his place, and, and he knows it, and, and we're all good. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, probably going into another All Pro year. Uh, absolute legend of a human. By the way, Mormon Hall of Famer for sure, for sure, Mormon Hall of Famer. <laughs> Just for future okay. reference, uh, Mr. Eric Weddle. Thank you so much, Eric. Appreciate you, dude. Hey, that was awesome. Thanks for having me on, guys. Hey, you're really a uh, really cool guy. Did you do that workout yet, or are you doing it now? I'm going in. I'm heading in right now. Golly, I can't believe you go hard like that the day after. Is that the Ravens tell you to do that, or is that your thing? No, nah, I've been doing it for about eight years now. Jesus. There's a reason you're the great. <laughs> you're, there's a reason you're great. Jeez. <laughs> Have a great one, Weddle. We appreciate you, buddy. Good luck the rest of the year. I will. You're the man. See ya.